Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing 25 bookish facts about myself. They are super random and I'm probably going to ramble a lot so I'm just going to get started. Um, number one is that I definitely prefer the physical book over the ebook, but I read ebooks all the time and I since last year have started listening to audiobooks, but I just really love having the feel of that book in your hand. Number two is I will use anything as a bookmark um, that I really, really try not to dog ear pages. I really don't like that. If it's a book that's already been dog eared because it's previously used, then then that's another story. Number three is I've always enjoyed like the mystery spooky books. Uh, even growing up, I was into Goosebumps, Nancy Drew, um, the scary stories to tell in the dark, which I know I've mentioned on my channel before. Um, it was just something I was always drawn to. Number four is that my parents always were supportive of my reading or my love to read. Um, both my parents are readers, not as much as myself, but they always took us to the library. Um, eventually growing up, I think I was like in third grade when we moved to our house that I spent the rest of my childhood in. We lived right down the street from the library, so we were always going to the library. Um, my parents never said no to a book, so, you know, if I wanted a toy or something, I had to work extra for it, or I had to wait for a special occasion. Um, but when it came to a book, my parents would basically just buy me whatever book I wanted. Um, and they also, they never restricted what I wanted to read either, which is probably, uh, why I was scared to sleep with the lights off when I was young, but, um, I completely skipped YA, read whatever I wanted, and they were always supportive of my love of reading. Number five is I read adult books very young, kind of like I just said. I skipped YA completely. Um, I did go through the Twilight phase. I enjoyed Twilight and Harry Potter, but um, other than that, no YA books for me, really. Uh, it also wasn't really like a genre back then, either. Uh, number six was... Uh, I used to be a reading snob, I guess you would say. Um, like I said, I didn't read any YA, and I didn't think that you should be reading anything below your reading level. So when I was in high school, reading adult books, I was kind of judgy of the people who were reading young adult books. And now that I'm almost 30, uh, I read young adult books all the time. I've read middle grade. I think you should just... Read whatever you want, whenever you want, as long as you're enjoying it, and as long as you're reading, that's all that matters. Number seven, my biggest like pet peeve or the worst trope um, or the worst like plot twist, in my opinion, is when the character wakes up and realizes that like everything that had just happened is fake or they dreamt it or whatever. I hate that in books. I hate that in movies and TV shows. Everything like that is the worst trope, plot twist, whatever. Uh, number eight is my favorite place to read is on our back deck. As long as the weather is perfect, we have a bunch of furniture out there, or sometimes I'll just lay a blanket out and lay out there with my dogs and read, and that's like the best place to read. Number nine is my favorite book type would be like one of those really big floppy paperbacks. Like they're the easiest to read, the easiest to carry around, um, but I do think hardbacks look really great on your shelves. Number 10, I'm not a plot versus characters kind of person. As long as either the characters are done well or the plot's done really well, I'll enjoy the book. Number 11 is I can read anywhere and at any time. Um, it, nothing really bothers me. I don't need to have silence or anything like that. And that kind of takes me into number 12 that I basically always have a book with me. I have the Kindle app on my phone, so I usually always have some type of ebook with me, but then I do always carry a book with me in my purse or in my book bag that I take to work. I just never want to get stuck somewhere without a book. Number 13 is even if I own the physical copy of the book, if it's one that I'm really enjoying and really into, I will try to borrow the ebook or the audiobook from the library so that I can like constantly be consuming it. Um, so if I'm out somewhere and I can't just pull out a book, I can pull out my phone. Or if I'm at a my lunch break at work and I don't have my book with me, I have it on my phone. Number 14, um, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I grew up on Harry Potter. 
Um, and I also enjoy Twilight. And actually, I've been to two midnight releases. I've been to um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows and then Breaking Dawn. And it seems super cheesy and stuff, and it is, I guess, but um, it was it was a lot of fun. You just like go and you wait in line with all your friends and everyone else who's there because they love the same thing that you do. And you just hang out and you get the book and then you read it all night. And it's, it's lots of fun. I really wish I was still into some type of series or that stores still did that. Maybe they do, but I never see anything about it anymore. So I'm not sure, but those were two really great bookish memories. Number 15, I don't normally annotate books. The only time I do annotate books is if they are, an, it's a non-fiction book or if it's something that I have multiple copies of. Like I have a full collection of Edgar Allan Poe works that I got for like $5 and I have multiple copies of his works. So that one really cheap version, I like write notes in it or whatever in that book. And then I also have a bunch of copies of Wuthering Heights that I annotate in. Number 16 kind of goes along with number 15. My most like duplicate copies of works would be my 10 copies of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And then I have 28 copies of works by Edgar Allan Poe. They are not all um, like big collections and some are like, a, one's like a 10 book collection set that I have. Um, yeah, so a lot of Poe. Number 17 is my favorite bookstore was Borders, but those are gone. That's the store that we would do the midnight releases at. Um, I, I guess now it's Books A Million. It's kind of the same thing, but it's just not the same. But a lot of my books come from used stores anyways. Number 18, um, one of my bridal showers was actually like literary themed. Um, the favors were bookmarks and little notepads and we got little bags that had a quote from Wuthering Heights and my cake actually had a quote from Wuthering Heights on it as well and I'll put a picture up here. It was a lot of fun and super cute. Number 19 is I always take the dust jackets off my books when I read them and when I lend them out. But I don't lend my books out really to anybody but my mom. Um, so, but I still take the dust jacket off. Number 20 is goes along with 19 I guess. I have like a running list in my phone of what books people have of mine. It's kind of like a library basically like tracking who has what and you know I just check them off or remove them when they return the books. Number 21. I absolutely hated reading out loud in class growing up and not because I have any like issues reading. Um, but I was always that person who always did the reading and normally read ahead. So it was like backtracking and then it was just super annoying. It was like my biggest pet peeve, especially when we were in high school and we were all almost adults. And I was just kind of like every man for himself. If you didn't read it, you didn't read it. <laughs> Number 22, I'm working on my own personal Stephen King project, just trying to read all of his books. And I'm not sure when I'm putting this video up, but there will, there is or will be a video about that coming up or I've already posted. I don't know. I'll link it either way. Um, but yeah, I don't have like strict goals. I'm just trying to read all his work. Number 23, uh, I'm a closeted booktuber. Is that a correct term? Is that okay to say? Uh, literally the only people who know that I do this are like you people who are watching this. Um, my family doesn't know, my husband doesn't know, my friends don't know. Um, I kind of wanted to just like make sure it was something I wanted to stick with before I went and told everyone I did it um, or I was going to do it. Um, it's just, it's just weird. <laughs> it's so weird doing this still sometimes, even though I'm having a lot of fun and I'm talking to a lot of people and uh, just enjoying myself doing it. It's so weird. So I don't know how much longer it'll be a secret, but don't tell anyone. Number 24, I didn't start listening to audiobooks until last year. Um, and I think I had tried previously with other books, but I wasn't like fully invested in listening to audiobooks until I started uh, the Realm of the Elderling series by Robin Hobb that really got me into audiobooks. Number 25, uh, my last fact, I have two 
bookish tattoos. Uh, the first one I have always written on my arm with the Deathly Hollow symbol as the A from Harry Potter. And then the second one isn't necessarily bookish. Like I didn't get it because it was bookish. Um, but I have a degree in anthropology and my uh, concentration was biological anthropology. And so on my hip, I have the statement, there is grandeur in this view of life. And that is actually part of the last paragraph of The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. And those are all my bookish facts. If you have any super weird or quirky or interesting facts about you down below, bookish or otherwise, um, I can lick my elbow, which I guess is like supposed to be impossible, but I, it's not bookish. <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.